Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our special fifth Thursday presentation. It's uh, June 30th, 2022. Successful job searches focusing on these four areas. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, or if you'd like to put in your information so you can network with other people on the call, please feel free to open up the Zoom chat window. And you're welcome to do that there. And for those watching on Facebook, please just enter any questions you have into the comment field. We are monitoring that feed and we'll be sure to get those questions answered for you throughout the presentation. Please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that any comments you put in the Zoom chat window do not appear in the recording. Well, today we're gonna to talk about successful job searches focusing on these four areas. So let me get the presentation up and running and give me just a second here. Yep, I've loaded up the wrong presentation. Hold on here. Let's try one more time. Sorry about that. Just one second here. We're waiting on the PowerPoint to load. And it is not sharing. Okay. Well, let's go to alternative method number two. Give me just a second here. Okay. All right. So uh, a little bit of background about me. My name is Jeff Morris. Uh, I've got 20 plus years of manufacturing, light manufacturing experience. In 2007, I started facilitating and I took over the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The group meets every Friday morning at 9.30. Uh, we'll be need, meeting tomorrow morning. I'll tell you about that at the end of our presentation. And in 2008, I created a 501c3 nonprofit called careerdfw.org, a website to help those who are unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search that you may not know. It is available on Amazon or if you uh, see me for lunch on a Friday morning after our meeting, uh, I also have them uh, with me there too. You can pick them up. In 2012, I was invited to go to the White House Forum on Job Clubs and Career Ministries. It was sponsored by the White House Office of Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. It was at the uh, Eisenhower Executive Office building right next door to the White House. And uh, when I came back from that, I realized that there really wasn't anything else like Career DFW in the country. Nobody else was doing what I was doing. So uh, I had already owned the name CareerUSA.org. So uh, a couple months later, we started CareerUSA.org to help those around the United States. Career DFW and Career USA, they're a 501c3 not-for-profit. They have, we have no full or part-time employees. Everything I've done has uh, been as a volunteer over the last 13 years. All of our speakers are volunteers. All the people who help me with the website are volunteers. Uh, I only have to spend money if I really have to, but I do spend it on websites, you know, naming the websites, any kind of uh, other, whatever expenses come up uh, would be covered by that, but that's it. Career DFW survives with donations and book sales. All the proceeds from the book go to support Career DFW. Uh, on LinkedIn, we encourage you, if you're not part of our group, uh, join the Career USA LinkedIn group, join the Career DFW LinkedIn group. Uh, the Career DFW, you don't have to live in the Dallas Fort Worth area to join the Career DFW group. It's just I happen to start one LinkedIn group for each website. Uh, currently, the Career DFW website has over 13,800 members, so it's a great way to connect with other people. You can also follow us on Facebook if you are on your phone. Just hit follow, and every time we go live, you'll get a little beep, beep, beep saying that we're currently live on Facebook. 
And uh, you're also welcome to subscribe to our Career USA YouTube channel. Uh, currently, we have, it says 310 there. We've got, I think, when I looked, 392 as of yesterday, different presentations that are up there that you can go back and watch at your leisure. Okay, so we're going to talk about the four areas of your job search that you should be focusing on. So they are, number one, your resume. You've got to have your resume ready to go first. So we're going to talk about that first. Then the second thing is once you get your resume done, then you've got to make sure your LinkedIn profile is complete and ready to go so people can find you. The third step is your resume and your LinkedIn and uh, profile will not get you a job. But what your resume and LinkedIn profile does is it gets you a phone call. How well you practice your interviewing skills is what's going to get you your next job. And then the last thing is after you've got Steps one, two, and three done, you want to get out and network and apply everything you've now learned. So what I'm going to talk about today uh, is that top 20% of the iceberg. Uh, you know, the next hour, uh, I'm, just, I'm just going to hit some of the highlights, but we could go into details if we had a lot more time to talk. So uh, this will just be a lot of information. It is being recorded. So if you need to go back and you want to watch it again, you can go back and watch it online. All right, so let's talk about resumes first. One of the things I find when people start out looking for a job is they have analysis paralysis. They spend all day long trying to figure out what to put on the resume and how to do it. Uh, all the stories that you're gonna hear today are true. They all come from my Friday group. Uh, I've been leading it now for 14 years. So I sort of got lots of stories that have come out of that group that I can share. And I remember once we had this one lady who was coming to our Friday meeting back when we were meeting in person a couple, you know, four or five years ago. And she would come every week and, you know, three months in, four months in, five months in. I asked her how are things going. Well, I'm still working on my resume. I haven't decided exactly how I want to frame it and how I want to do things. You know, so this was somebody who has analysis paralysis. She couldn't decide at what point, uh, you know, when she'd be ready to apply for a job. So my first question is, do you have a master resume? What is a master resume? A master resume is everything you've done since you graduated college. Seven, 10, 15 pages long, whatever it is. Every job you've had, you list eight or 10 or 15 bullet points of successes that you had at that job. You had to do with the company's name, you put their exact dates you worked, supervisor's names, anything you can think of, you generate this master document. And then when you see a job description, you take that master resume and cut out everything that's unimportant, okay? Because when you see a job description, you want your resume to match that job description frame for frame, page for, you know, word for word, okay? So, you know, this way you eliminate. I'm sure everybody here has done a lot of really, really good things, but if they don't ask about it on the job description, you don't need to tell them about it. You can maybe mention it in an interview when you're actually talking with them, but you just want them to call you up. How are you going to get them to call you up? Tell them exactly what they're looking for and show that you've done that. You have to remember your resume is just a hook, okay? It is only going to get you that phone call. A resume does not get you a job. It only gets you that phone call. You've got to customize every resume you send out. So people will go to professional resume writers, and then that's what they'll send out for every job. But you really can't do that. You need to take the time to modify things. You've got to think about this. In an HR department, when you're applying for a job, and if people were actually reading a resume, you know, they're going to spend seven to 10 seconds on that resume. They're going to glance over it. And if you don't match the words that are in the job description that they're looking for, they're just going to move on to the next candidate. That's the same with an ATS system. If the keywords don't match what's in the job description, they're going to move on to find somebody who has a higher keyword match. So you've got to customize a resume to match the job description. You want to make sure you keep the details, what's in the job description. We've talked about this many, many times. Okay, um, a few more things. Your bullet points underneath your job, each job you've had, have got to have successes. I want to know what you've done, 
how much money you saved, what percent of an increase did you provide, how much did you improve sales, you know, how many, uh, you know, you had 12 customers and at the end of the year you had 25 customers. Give me details because I don't want to read your job description. I want to read what you've done and what you can maybe do for me that I'm looking for somebody with those same needs. So every bullet point you say, you've got to be, you know, dollars, percents, and numbers because those stand out. Do not blindly send out a resume because you don't know what they're looking for. If you just shoot a bunch of, I mean, think about it, 25, 30 years ago, I remember when I graduated college, I went to the print shop. I had my resume printed, just a one-page resume. You know, it didn't change. And then I just sent them out to all these different places that I was interested in. Well, you don't do that anymore. You've got to customize your resume because it's just so easy. It's, it's not that hard to do, and you can do it pretty quickly. You do not want to post your resume on LinkedIn, okay? Now, I know there's a field there where you can post documents. Don't post your resume because, once again, you may post your resume as a customer service representative, but they're looking for a customer relationship specialist. So it doesn't match up, all right? So you're gonna post the details of your resume and, and the content into the different fields of, of LinkedIn so you can be found, but you're not gonna post your, don't post your resume as a document. One of the things you may wanna consider is a one-page bio. A one-page bio is an extremely, extremely effective tool uh, in fact, our speaker last Friday at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group talked all about the one-page bio and why you should do it. Uh, Minna Brown right here, she has a great book. She was our speaker last Friday. Uh, the name of her book is called Be Sharp. It's by Minna Brown and Paul Asinoff. The two of them wrote this book together. The first half of the book is all how to communicate your 30-second introductions, how to tell people what it is you do. And the second half of the book is all about the one page bio. I think it's a great book. It's one of the three books that I recommend everybody have in their career library because how to introduce yourself and a one page bio, I think were very, very effective tools. Okay, so let's talk about your resume as far as an ATS system, applicant tracking system. Number one, do not use any special characters or any special formatting. Uh, there's over a hundred different ATS systems out there. Some ATS systems may recognize certain characters and some won't. So if you use anything other than just the little simple bullet, you've used like a check mark in front of each, uh, each of your bullets, it may not recognize what's going on and may just fill the whole sentence out. You do not want to use the header section or the footer section in Microsoft Word. Uh, because some systems just don't see that information. And you've got to ensure that the keywords align to what's in the job descriptions. The most important thing you can do is to make sure those keywords align because that's what's going to match up to be found. So one of the things you can do on your resume is as you're work, looking at all your bullet points, is play the so what game. Read your bullet point and then say, so what? Did I give a percent or a dollar or a number that makes sense? I mean, did I tell somebody what it is? I, what was my success? If you didn't, go back and say, well, so what? Well, it was because I was able to do so-and-so. Well, then modify those bullet points so that they have tangible results. You may want to also recommend that you start, a, uh, start every bullet point with an action verb. Okay, people love action. It helps draw people in. So if you use, you know, if you use something, that would be great. I have a list of action words I'll be glad to send you. If you'd like to have them, I'll give you an email address here at the end and I can send that document. Okay, some common resume mistakes we see all the time. Number one, spelling and grammatical errors. That gets you thrown out immediately, okay? Um, every recruiter I've ever talked to says, as soon as I see a mistake, Boom, I go on to the next resume. Why? Because they have 100 resumes they can go through. And, you know, they're just, think about it. Recruiters are trying to eliminate you. So you, they've got their job description. They're trying to find eight to 10 people that they can reach out to and then make the decision if they want to bring a couple of them in. So how do they do that? They're just looking for anything that could go wrong. Number two. 
Excuse me for a second. I got to sneeze. Well, maybe not. Okay. Uh, second thing is using an unprofessional email address. No, Kathy loves kitty cats at gmail.com. You know, you want John Smith PMP at gmail.com or John Smith TX for Texas at gmail.com or just John Smith at gmail.com if you're lucky enough to get a very simple email address. But you want a professional email address. In fact, I think you should have two email accounts. You have one email account, which is all your personal emails that you send out, you know, to your friends and family. The second email account should be your work account, how you're communicating and all your career connections and everything. It makes things a little bit easier and simpler to do. Number three, let's see here, failure to demonstrate and quantify results. So we've talked about that. Every bullet point, you've got to tell me why. What was the result? How did you succeed? Show me those kinds of things. And then another thing is if your format or your design is too elaborate. My daughter is a UX designer, graphic interface, uh, user interface designer. So when she was laid off from IBM a couple of years ago, she then sat down and came up with this really fancy resume with a yellow triangle and a yellow green circle and a blue square and whatever. And I looked, she sent it to me and I went, oh, that is just, that's too much. You're over the top here. You're not going to, you can't use that when you send in, you know, when you're filling out something for an ATS system. Well, of course, she didn't listen to dad, but IBM gave them right management. And so she had a right management counselor and the counselor told her the same thing. And pretty much when she was done with her resume that she had to do for right management, it looked exactly like what we talk about on our Thursday resume classes. So you've got to make sure that your resume is plain, simple, easy to read, shows results. It's very, very important. So we do a resume class the first and third Thursday every month at one o'clock central time. You're welcome to join us the first and third Thursdays. Uh, it's live on the Career DFW Facebook page. Uh, and you can also then go back and watch it after the fact on the Career USA YouTube channel. Okay, so now we're going to talk about LinkedIn. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat window or put them on the comment field in Facebook. Like I said, I'm monitoring both of them. So now we're going to talk about LinkedIn. So on LinkedIn, you got to think about here's some statistics. Uh, this is as of the first of the year 77 job applications are submitted every second of the day. Over 10 million people use the open to work feature, the open to work banner. We'll talk more about that in a second. 45 million people a week use LinkedIn to search for jobs every week. Four people are hired every minute on LinkedIn. So 77 people apply every second, four people get hired every minute on LinkedIn. There are over 57 million companies listed on LinkedIn and there's over 120,000 schools that are listed. And what's important about schools, schools are a great way to network with other people uh, who you've worked, been to. So if you've gone to a college, you should be able to you know, connect with those alumni and you never know if one of those alumni works at a place that you want to get into. That's why we mentioned that. So number one, has your LinkedIn, is your LinkedIn profile current and fully developed? So number one, is it up to date? Does it have a current picture? Does it have your current job titles on it, current listings? You know, have you filled out almost every field? LinkedIn will help you along and say, well, do you have a certificate you can add? Do you have any awards you want to do? Do you have any volunteering experience? You know, what is it you, how can you tell somebody who you are and what you can do for them, okay? So does your profile tell a company how you can help them? That's important. It's not what they can do for you. It's how can I help your company succeed? What can I do for you? How can I solve your problem? Companies are gonna hire you because they have a problem. They got a problem, they need somebody to solve a problem. Are you a problem solver? Have you shown that on your LinkedIn profile? So a couple of things here. Can someone reach out to you easily? Is your phone number and email address easy to be found? If you're not a first degree connection, they can't see that in the contact information. That's why we always recommend you put it in the about section. 
your phone and email should be in your contact information and in the about section so that people can find you and reach out to you. You've got to make sure that you have a focus statement, your title statement, telling people what it is you do. You're an experienced job or front end engineer or a talented marketing brand manager. Now, if you notice, both of those start out with action verbs, experienced, talented. So we do that so that you know, it, it invites somebody a little bit of an action to try to get people to do things. So here happens to be my profile. So uh, I went and used a program called canva.com and that's what gave me my banner there. So I was able to incorporate a couple different things. I put in a word cloud that comes off my resume. I put in a copy of my book because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy to promote that this is what I talk about, this is what I do. And I put my phone number and my email address built into my profile picture so that when somebody, if we're, we're not connected, they still can find my email address and my phone number if they need to reach me, if they want to reach me. So then down where we talk about your accomplished statement here to talk about who it is you do, I'm an accomplished manufacturing manager, operation manager, general manager. I do things better, faster, smarter, sort of as my saying. And then I'm a speaker at career workshops and seminars. So here is a way that you can tell people what it is you do. So you can have a couple of different job titles. Those job titles should be the job titles off of LinkedIn. Okay, so whatever, when you're applying for a job, when you say you're open to work, whatever the default job titles are. You don't wanna say you're the chief people person because that's probably not a LinkedIn official title, but director of human resources, director of talent acquisition, you know, make sure that you're using whatever title there. You have 220 characters here, so be sure to list everything you can do. You want to make sure that you add a professional email address and the closest large city state. So if you lived in Carrollton or Louisville or Plano or Murphy or Wiley, uh, you know, or I'm looking at Crawley or Mansfield, you may want to, instead of listing those, I always recommend you list the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you live in Evanston, Evanston, Illinois, you probably want to list the Chicago Metroplex. If you lived in uh, Silver Springs, Maryland, you probably want to list the Washington, D.C. area. List the closest big metro because that's going to, when somebody's searching for you, that will make things work a little bit better. Always send a personal note with a LinkedIn inv invitation. I get on a daily basis, two or three or four LinkedIn invitations. And if I don't have a personal note from you telling me why we should connect, I don't connect with you. I'm not an open networker, okay? I just don't connect with everybody. So send somebody a personal note. Hey, Jeff, I saw you today on your presentation. Thanks for, you know, thanks for the presentation. I picked up some great tips. Please, can we connect? Yes, I'll connect with you. Jeff, I hate your blue background. Why don't you pick a orange background or something? Just send me a personal note, send me something and uh, I will connect with you. But when you send me nothing, I don't know why, okay? Even on a cell phone, you can send a personal note. Just click on more. This is a screenshot off an Apple and this is probably older. I understand they've updated it now and they have three little, three little lines like a hamburger little symbol. If you click on that, it should open up and you should be able to click on personal, personalize the invitation. So even on a cell phone, do it. But my recommendation is try to sit at your PC, make those connections or your PC or Mac or whatever, because at a desktop or on a laptop, uh, you've got a little bit more functions than you do on a cell phone. If, so here's a couple, here's just a, a, a something to note here. When you're looking at somebody and you go, oh, I'd like to, connect with Tonya, uh, when you see that white connect button, never ever click on a white connect button because when you do that, it automatically sends out that invitation, the generic invitation. So what you wanna do is click on the person's face and then up comes their profile. And on their profile, you should see a blue connect button. A blue connect button will always allow you to send a personal note. So. Just be aware, don't click on the white connect button. Always look for that blue connect button. Very, very important. Okay, so now you wanna get your profile complete to an all-star status. It's very, very important. 
you've got to have a current position, a location, an industry, a summary, and at least five skills, an education, and a photo. So those are the seven things you got to have. Well, wait, Jeff, I don't have a current position because I'm unemployed. Well, so here's what you do. Now, LinkedIn recently opened up a new feature that says that they have a new uh, section that you can say why you're no longer like either you're unemployed or you've been taking care of family or whatever the reason is for a gap in your profile. I don't think those are necessary. I think the better tool is to create a current job. And what it is, you list two or three job titles that you would be interested in. You got to focus in what is it you want to do, two or three job titles. And then for the company name, you put your phone number and email address. And then in the down below where you can put two or three bullet points telling people what it is you can do for them. One of the bullet points can be hashtag ONO, or you could spell out open to new opportunities, or how can I help your company? Feel free to reach out to me. But list a couple of things. So that gives you a current job, which then moves you up in the ratings. Then when you do get that new job, you can go erase that job off your LinkedIn profile and then just list your new job. So that's a way that you can always have a current position. So let's talk about photos and headshots. These are some actual real photos that have been on LinkedIn. Everyone on the top row, eh, reject, okay? That first photo in the upper left-hand corner, it's too fuzzy. You know, I don't want to see the tree growing out of his neck, you know? I mean, it just doesn't look right. I mean, it's fuzzy. It's because you don't have good front lighting. The second picture, the guy in the purple shirt, fine. So he went to LSU and he's relaxing, I guess, on a beach or he's in his backyard. I don't know. But too much clutter. I use LinkedIn. I want to see your professional photo. I want to know what it is you look like so that when you come in, I know what, for an interview, I want to know what you look like. That third photo with the lady sitting on the chair, I think it's too far away. I think you need to be, you know, shoulders to head is what you want. You want to, I use LinkedIn as like a phone book. And so I don't know who somebody is. I'll look them up on, think, on LinkedIn. I'm not good with names, but I'm okay with faces and go, oh yeah, I remember that person from a meeting I went to. Now that first photo in the upper right-hand corner, uh, that's Gail. Is it him Gail or her Gail? How do you really know? Okay. So don't, we don't need any family photos. We just need a picture of you. Now, the lower left-hand corner, the open to work banner, it's great. We know the person's open to work, but that's too far away. I can't see you, okay? Now, I would highly recommend the bottom two photos uh, that are nice, they're clean, they have a clean background, black and white photo, perfectly acceptable because I know I can look at that person and I can tell exactly who they are. One other tip, please notice the two photos that I really, really love uh, down here at the bottom, this one here and this one right here. Notice how their shoulders are turned. So this one's in a little bit and this one's out. So it makes them look like, remember, your photo on LinkedIn is going to put you in the upper left-hand corner. Well, you don't want to be facing off the screen. You want to be facing into your profile. You want to be facing into your profile. So you know, if you need to, you may need to rotate your picture 180 degrees so that your photo is looking in to the, into the LinkedIn profile. It's a little thing, but it's just some people, it really drives them crazy. Okay, you need to have a good headline, the job title that you're looking for. Uh, you've got to, I say, if you're open to work, if you're looking for new opportunities, put the open to work banner in here. Let people know you're working. Yes, 95, 97% of recruiters are on LinkedIn, but less than 50% of recruiters pay for the recruiting package. Uh, this past Tuesday, we had uh, Kurt Vondermarter with, with us to talk about LinkedIn from Recruiter's Eye. He pays $10,000 a year per license for LinkedIn to be able to look at LinkedIn and see everybody who's out there. He can see 830 million people that are out there, but if somebody's not doing it, they're only going to know you're open to work if you happen to have that open to work banner there. Okay. You may run across and you may have a connection. You know, it could be somebody you've known five or 10 years ago and they go, Oh, I didn't know you're open to work. Oh, let's talk because they may have something. We worked really great together years ago. 
So put the banner, if you're open to work, if you're looking for a job, put the banner on there. Now you probably don't want to do it if you're currently working and you don't want your current boss to know. Okay, so let's talk about the about section. The about section is an overview of your career. And you want to use keywords from your profession and be sure to include your contact information. This about section is, has 2,200 spaces. So it's the largest place on LinkedIn for you to tell people what it is you do and how you can help them. In the experience section, you want to list your job title. And if it's a funny job title, chief people person, in parentheses, add the job title that it would normally be called, you know, director of talent acquisition, director of HR, whatever that is. Uh, or, you know, sometimes if you're a project manager and that's your title, I'm a project manager too. Well, maybe in parentheses, put down what it is, you know, two or three words that tells us what kind of project manager you are. It would help. Be sure to list a description of your job duties and include keywords from your profession. Look it up. There's no excuse for not to have lots and lots of keywords so that because keywords are what's going to match in the profile. Uh, you want to make sure you have an education listed, any awards, certificates, professional development you've done. If you've written a book, any publications, any patents, there's places for all that on LinkedIn nowadays. Uh, you've got to pick five, you have to have at least five skills from your profession. Now, I know one of the new features on LinkedIn is when you pick a skill, it can say, well, what job is this associated with? So you can now associate it with different jobs and things that you've done. Back when I listed all my skills, that feature wasn't available, so mine are not connected to the jobs that I currently have. And then you've got to have, have a couple recommendations. Uh, you need recommendations from coworkers or former bosses. I say you need to have two or three uh, from 2020 to 2022. Okay, I remember looking at somebody's profile a couple of weeks ago and their last recommendation was from 2014. Waste of time, it's not gonna help you at all, okay? It doesn't hurt you, but I don't think it helps because it doesn't show that you've done anything until recent. So try to have something recent. Well, Jeff, where do I get you know recommendations from? Well, quite frankly, you need to write your recommendation that you'd like somebody else to say send them to it and go, you know, as a former boss, you put this in my last uh, review about how I was a good employee, how I did this, how I did this, would you mind adding this to my LinkedIn profile? They may or may not do it, but if you write it for somebody, you'll get what you want said. If you don't write it for somebody, somebody may say, well, Jeff was a good worker. Well, that's not really a recommendation. So in many cases, you need to write it, make sure it's correctly spelled, make sure all the spelling's right, and then uh, send it to them to have them add. A couple of features on LinkedIn that you really need to be concerned about. Number one is you wanna turn off people also viewed, okay? I'm sure you've seen some, you look at some people's profiles and over on the right-hand side, there's a little box over there and it says, people just like Jeff. Well, you know what? I don't want people to know other people just like Jeff. I'm unique, I wanna sell me, okay? So turn off that feature because uh, there's, you know, recruiters looking at you, they're gonna, oh, well, here are 10 more people just like Joe. Let me look at this person, look at this person, look at this person. So, you know, don't make it, you're making it easy for a recruiter to look for somebody else. Number two, you wanna turn on, let recruiters know you're open to opportunities. So turn that on, put on the open to work banner because one of the features that a recruiter has with the full blown recruiting package is when they first start looking for candidates, they're gonna look for candidates that are open to work, okay? So make it easy. Be sure to follow any companies that you're interested in or have applied to. So in this case, this is the uh, page for uh, Dallas-Fort Worth uh, International Airport, DFW Airport. Uh, you wanna click on that follow button because one of the features in LinkedIn that the LinkedIn recruiting package has is if they go and do a search for a project manager, and they list some things and then you pop up. So let's say you do it, they've got 200 people that are interested in being a project manager. One of the boxes they have across the top is follows this company. So there may only be 38 people who follow DFW Airport. They're probably gonna click on that because they go, well, these people already know what we're doing. Let's see if any one of those 38 could fill our needs, okay? So it's a great way to do that. Also in addition, 
you'll get more job leads and more information about them in your newsfeed. You need the like, share, and post, okay? One of the features in LinkedIn for the recruiting package is people who are active on LinkedIn, okay? Now, you only have to be on LinkedIn, I say 15 to 30 minutes a day, okay? First thing in the morning, you get on LinkedIn, you go and you, you maybe share a post once a week, you, you uh, copy a post, you like a post, you like a couple of things that are on there. You just, you're active. Any kind of a message you get, you go respond to any messages you have, and then you're done. You know, unless you're trying to research and find information out about companies or people who work at companies, you've done everything you need to to sort of be active. So just, you know, think about posting something one, once a week, something you know, something you know about. It could be your own creative post, or you can go pick something from a website like feedly.com, whatever it is. But you've got to be active on LinkedIn because that moves you up in the algorithm. You need to always reply to any LinkedIn in mail or connection requests. Even if you're not interested, you say, no, thank you. Now, if it's somebody who doesn't send you a personal note, don't worry about it. But if somebody sends you a personal note, you need to respond, even if you're not willing to connect with them. Thanks, but I'm not interested. Um, you know, just move on. But it's just real, real important that you respond because once again, LinkedIn keeps track of if you're active and if you respond. So we do a LinkedIn presentation every Tuesday at one o'clock central. Uh, we've got four different people, actually five different people who talk about LinkedIn. So come join us any Tuesday at one o'clock. We've got a lot of those past presentations are on the Career USA YouTube channel. Uh, and we do also broadcast those live on Facebook. All right, so let's talk about interviewing. As I said before, your resume and your LinkedIn profile don't get you a job. They only get you a phone call. So how well you practice your interview skills is what's gonna get you your next job. So for interviewing, number one, you've gotta be prepared for an interview. For every bullet point on your resume, you should have a story. You need to write them down. You need to make it easy for somebody to be able to go through and, and, and talk about what it is you do. So one of the things I recommend is grab some index cards. And what I do is I put a little S-T-A-R or S-A-R, whatever you want to do. And then I'll list my bullet point at the top. And then I'll list, here is the situation. Here is the task. Here is the action. And here is the result of what I did. So uh, that way I can just sit there and I can flip through and I can find the card I want. It makes it easy because uh, when you write something down physically, it locks it into your memory. And then this is also a great way to sit there and review as you're getting ready for an interview. You can sit there and just look at a couple of stories and you can get those down pat and you can see what it is and then go to the next one. So I just think it's a real effective tool. Every bullet point, you need to write them down. You need to have a, a star story about it. Yeah, yeah, you may have a whole big stack of cards, but you've done the hardest part of your job. Just don't try to off the, off the top going, you know, you listed something from 10 years ago. Oh, well, yeah, here's what that meant. Or, you know, have, have those details ready to go. You've got to, oops, let's see here. Sorry about that. You've got to keep your answers to 45 to 60 seconds. Uh, nowadays, in fact, I think it may be 30 to 45 seconds. If you're doing a Zoom call, you want it to be short, sweet, detailed. You want to hit them with it. And then it's okay to say, would you like to know more details? Did I answer your question? Would you like to know more? So you can always ask that, but short, sweet, really focused in, because if you have a 30 minute conversation and your answers are taking two minutes a piece, you may only get 10 questions in, but if you can cut it down to 30 seconds, you may be down, you could get 20 questions in, or you know, they could get, you could, they could get to know you a lot better. So keep your answers shorter rather than longer. It's hard to do but it's just something you've got to practice. Practice, practice, practice. You have to be prepared for the following questions. Why do you want to work here? I know there's a recruiter and when she talks to somebody, that's the first one of the questions. This is she always asks them, why do you want to work here? And if they don't have a good answer, they don't move on to the next step. How much did you make at your last job? Now, it may not be that, you know, it could be, well, how much do you expect to make at this job or how much, whatever, you've got to be prepared for that uh, financial question. There's lots of different you know, stories about how to handle that. Like I said, 
We're just covering sort of the details. These are just things you need to be thinking about and prepare for your interview. Why'd you leave your last job? Was a job before that or a job before that? So be prepared with all those answers. Keep it positive. You never wanna be negative about any past jobs or any past employers. Uh, I love this rule. This is the Ron rule. It's a 10 plus one rule. You always wanna have 10 questions ready to ask. You like to try to get five of those questions answered during the interview. So if they ask you a question about something, and then you can say, so have you had that situation happen here? Or, you know, that brings up, you know, I had a question here that have blah, 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 blah. It sort of relates. If you can sort of do that, you've now turned your conversation, you've turned your interview from an inquisition to a conversation. And that's what you want to have that back and forth. And then the plus one question is at the very end, ask for the job, ask for what the next step is, that you're ready to go. So you always wanna find out what the next step is gonna be. You wanna be sure to express even at the end of the interview, express even a greater interest in your position. Uh, we talk about opening statements and enthusi of enthusiasm. You can find out more about that on our website and find that we've got a whole hour of presentation just talking about opening statements of enthusiasm because you, know, you tell somebody who, who you are, why you're excited about being here. You ask the first question, so tell me, you know, what are the three or four most important things you need me to do to be successful here? You, at the end, you, you know, you can then summarize. Now you said at the beginning that you need me to do X, Y, Z. Here's how I can do each one of those three things. I'm really excited. What's the next step? You know, can we wrap this up? I'd love to be, I'd love to come to work on Monday, you know? And then be sure, you know, ask to be advanced to the next step or ask for the job, very, very important. A really good question at the very end you can ask is, how do I compare to the ideal candidate? Not how do I compare to the other candidates? Because you don't care about the other candidates. You want to know, how do you compare to the ideal candidate, the person that they're looking for? And then if they have any questions, hopefully they'll come back and say, well, you really didn't talk that you had this experience. Oh, well, I do. We just never talked about it. So how do I compare to the ideal candidate? All right, a couple common interview mistakes that we see all the time. Number one, failing to take credit or explain your personal comp uh, con contribution. I know it's very hard. You know, we want to talk about what we did when we're in a group, but they're hiring you, not we. So you want to talk about this was what my role was when we were doing this. You know, when you're talking about the task and the actions you took, this is what I did to support the group, support the goal, support the result. Number two, never ever speak negatively about a previous job, coworker, or boss. Every job you've ever had, it was a great experience. You learned a lot of really valuable tools, but it was time for me to move on. Just something, you know, I learned a lot from my boss and I'm really excited about being here to be able to see how I can help your company succeed. And then the third thing is focusing too much on a single interviewer in a panel interview. So if you have a panel interview of like three different people, you want to make sure that you share moving your head and looking at each candidate, each of uh, the interviewers, you know, like every sentence. Because if somebody asks you a question and you only focus on that one person, you're blocking out everybody else. So try to, you know, try to keep moving, you know, maybe I would like to say like every sentence. Every time there's a period in your head and you're going to the next sentence, move to the next person. Next sentence, move to the next person as you're answering a question. Uh, interviewing, uh, very, very important. You have to practice. Uh, the practice interview, the Dallas Pit Crew offers practice interviews. They're now doing it five days a week, Monday through Friday. Uh, they used to do it only on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They're going to break out now and they'll do it five days a week, mornings, afternoons, whatever works for you. You need to send a resume and a job description to dallaspitcrew at gmail.com and then give them two to three days notice of when you'd like to be interviewed. So don't call them up and say, I got an interview tomorrow, I need help. Too late, do it early. Your motto is practice early, practice often. You're welcome to do three or four interviews. Uh, the interview lasts about 45 minutes. You'll get about 15 or 20 minutes of feedback. You get a recording of the interview. They do it via Zoom at this point. So if you're interested, you can get more information at DallasPitCrew.com. 
We also do interviewing Wednesday. So every Wednesday, since COVID started, we're doing an online session at one o'clock central time. Uh, starting in 2022, you're actually going to be able to watch somebody else do a practice interview. Yesterday, we watched a practice interview from a candidate uh, who is currently employed, got the job a couple months later, something they, she applied for. Uh, and so you're able to see the interview and watch what they do. It's a very valuable tool. Just watching somebody else, you'll learn a lot because you go, oh, that was a great way they, the great, the way they answered that was really, really great. So just consider uh, joining us Wednesdays at one o'clock. Uh, one of the things that we also have on the Career USA YouTube channel, uh, at the beginning of COVID, I asked uh, the two speakers to put together a 13 part, well, they to put together a presentation since we couldn't meet for the pit crew on Wednesdays. Can you put together something on interviewing that we can at least be able to help people during the process of what they need to do? So they put their heads together and who knew they came up with a new, it wasn't going to be 12 step, but they went, no, we can't have a 12 step process. We need to go 13. So they came up with 13 different uh, episodes. It's about 20 hours of material, but you can go back and watch any one of these at your convenience. Uh, the first five sessions talk about what to do before the interview, uh, how to analyze a job description, how to prepare for specific interviews, uh, you know, what a star story is, you know, really deep dive on how to get into that, video interviewing, by now hopefully everybody is familiar with. The next five lessons are all about what you do during the interview, interview openings, closing, follow up, to how to discuss that compensation question, why did you leave your last job? Uh, how to ask questions during the interview, how to show enthusiasm, and how to build rapport between you and the interviewer. And then the last three sessions are just some advanced topics on how to shorten the job search uh, through interview, informational interviewing, a really valuable tool that if you don't know about it, you really uh, look at that about how to do an informational interview, um, then how to deal with difficult interviewers, difficult questions. And then the very last one's a great session about how to avoid interview crashes. These were things that no matter how much you practice and how much you do, people tend to make the same mistakes. And they'll talk about what those are. So hopefully it'll make you a little bit aware of those things. So all those are on the Career USA YouTube channel. And I'll point that out at the very end and show that to you in just a couple of minutes. All right, so let's talk about a fourth section now, and that's networking. Because if you've got your resume done, you fill out your LinkedIn profile, you're ready to go, you practice your interviewing skills, now you're ready to get out and network you got to make sure you don't spend all day in front of a computer. Only 5 to 10% of jobs are found online. 10 to 15% of jobs are found using recruiter. 75 to 80% of jobs are found networking. Who you know who can get your resume on the hiring manager's desk. Uh, maybe you're doing an information interview and you're interviewing with somebody who, you know, they know they've got a job coming, you know, they're going to have a job rec opening up in a couple months, but they haven't advertised it yet but you're the perfect candidate. They may offer to, offer to you before they even actually open the job up. So getting out and networking is definitely the way to go. If you have a referral in a company, if you can network into a company, so you see a job you're interested in on a company and you can network your way in, you have a 50% job, 50% shot of getting that interview. If you don't have a referral and you're just waiting for the ATS system to match you up, I think it's actually less than a 2% chance, okay? So if you see a job you want, apply online, and then who do you know in, the net, in your network? Who can you reach out to who works at that company or maybe used to work at that company who may know who the hiring manager is or knows who the recruiter is to make it easy for you to you know, get your information out to that person? You've got to make sure you reach out to everybody you know. You've got to let them know uh, that you're out looking right now. So here's a great little tool. It's known, you know, somebody calls it a prayer letter. I just think it's a great networking tool. Here's something I think you should do. You should send out two emails every three weeks. One email goes to friends and family, church members maybe. The second email goes out to all your professional contacts. And the first uh, so the paragraph, this goes something like this. The first paragraph is, I want to thank the following people for their help over the last couple of weeks. Thanks to Joe, thanks to Mary, thanks to Sue, thanks to, you know, whoever, to, you know, whoever, just list some names. Now you're sending this out blind copy, so nobody knows, nobody else knows who's on there. 
even if nobody helped you, throw some names in there because they'll go, oh, well, they helped. Maybe I need to help too, okay? So you're just throwing out some positive vibes. The second paragraph is, as a reminder, I'm looking for a position as a program manager in the healthcare industry, or I would like some more information. I'm trying to network with people in the healthcare industry about program management, okay? So you're telling them, just as a reminder, here's what you're looking for. Number three, if you know someone who works at the following companies and list three to five companies that you're, you want help with. So I'm interested in company A. If you know anybody who works at company A, company B, company C, company D, I would appreciate the, the contact being able, I would appreciate if you would make a contact for me. And the last paragraph is, is there's, if there's anything I can do for you, please feel free to reach out to me. You send this out every three weeks. Now, for those people on sales, you know that the sales cycle, you need to make that personal touch five to seven times before the sales sold. So the first time you do this, you may not get any responses. Three weeks later, when you do it for the second time, you may get a couple people who respond. The third, the fourth, the fifth time you do it, you're gonna to start to see some traction really take off in how this works. I know somebody who used to do this every Sunday morning around noon, they send out the email. And after several times of doing this, within a half hour, they were getting phone calls. It was truly amazing the response they were getting back on, on, how, on, on, on getting the help that they were looking for. So we do a networking seminar the second and fourth Thursday of the month, uh, every Thursday, a second and fourth Thursday at 1 p.m. Central Time. We've got a lot of different speakers who have talked about networking. We're rotating back through them a second time. So you're able to go back and, and see and, and hear, you know, networking is basically the same thing. It's picking up the phone and calling somebody, reaching out and emailing somebody, letting them know, you know, you're trying to find some information out, advice. You're trying to find information and advice. So uh, come back, join us for any one of these speakers. They all do a great job, second, fourth Thursday every month. So just, uh, just a reminder, Career DFW and Career, you say we're putting on training four days a week. Tuesdays, we talk about LinkedIn. Wednesday, interviewing. Thursdays, the first and third Thursday is effective resumes. The second and fourth Thursday, networking. And then the Friday morning, every Friday morning at 9.30 in the morning, the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. So let me share a little bonus material with you before we wrap up. Uh, visit our Career USA YouTube channel. We've got over, well, 392 as of yesterday. 392 workshops have been recorded. All the workshops are up there as long as our speakers allow it. Uh, there are some speakers who don't want their stuff recorded, uh, but just some really fascinating, some really interesting information. Please feel free to join us. On the Career USA YouTube channel, click on playlist where you see that green arrow. Otherwise, you're gonna see all these different videos up there in some random order. And then pick the list you want, networking, uh, LinkedIn, effective resumes. So down where you see that purple arrow, click on view full playlist, and then up will come a list in date order with the newest one on top. And you can just scroll down and find whichever session it is you're looking for. And you can uh, you know, then go back and watch the video at your convenience. A couple other little tips here. If you're not, you're not, uh, I see. If you're not early, you're late, okay? My rule of thumb is five minutes early is on time, on time is late. I think whether the Green Bay football coach or whatever said something about that, that, you know, uh, you know, meetings start five, you know, you should be at the meeting five minutes before it starts. Be on time, it makes a big difference. Would you show up late to an interview? No. Would you show up late to a Zoom call? Yeah, a lot of people do, but you know, try to get there on time. Uh, email addresses, always include all of your contact information. Make a signature line with all of your details. So this is my signature line on every email I send out. Uh, I can reply back to you. This is what you'll get. Because if I, I wanna make it easy that if you have a question, you can pick up the phone and call me. You can copy this and put it in Outlook. You know, all the details are there. So you can get my email address, my uh, LinkedIn, information. I'm always promoting Career DFW and Career USA. Every email should have this on here. If on your phone, you need to do the same thing. 
if you're using iMail or uh, Gmail or whatever apps you're using for your email, make sure your signature is on there. Uh, I know a person once and they used to uh, send me an email and it said it came from iPhone. And it was just like, uh, okay. I mean, I knew it was them, but it was just like, you know, come on, modify what you're doing. Make it easy for me to reach back out to you. Uh, display name. I mean, here's one of those things about make sure your name is okay. Just yesterday, I saw somebody sent me an email. It came from, you know, Joe's Gmail, because Gmail, I guess, defaulted something in, something changed. So his name, his last name is not Gmail. It actually is something. So, you know, have a have your full name, like you see at the bottom there, Pam Stewart, Cecilia Young. Make sure your full name is on there. You don't want something like tbcpa2 at juno.com or br 6 f you know, SSC. Please put, you know, make sure, send an email to a friend and say, hey, what does my display name look like? You know, or send it to a different account and see how it comes up. Career USA, Career DFW, both sites are there. They're both there to help you. They're uh, totally free. Please let people know about them around the country. So just as a reminder, please join the Career DFW and Career USA LinkedIn groups. Please follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to join the Career USA mailing list, you can send an email to Career USA, the plus sign at subscribe.groups.io. Uh, let me just share a couple more slides here at the end and we will get done. Uh, let's see here, we talked about that, we've talked about this. Tomorrow morning at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group meeting, we're gonna do open forum. We'll talk about whatever questions you have about your interview. You can, uh, uh, I will get that information to you. So, I mean, just come join us. Whatever questions you have, you can jump in, you can participate, you can share with other, whatever information is you'd like. Uh, Kathy, if you hold on for just a second, I will put those action verbs in the chat window so anybody who wants it can get can uh, download it right there. So just hold on for a couple of seconds. Uh, if you'd like to join the Career DFW and Career USA LinkedIn groups, they're both there. They're both available for you. Uh, this session has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW Facebook page, the Career USA YouTube channel. Uh, we sort of already pointed this out. Click on playlist and then click on view full place to see everything. If you're not receiving emails about our workshops, you'd like to join our distribution email list, uh, you'll never be spammed, but what you will get is the uh, email, of the, the topic of the day, the title of the day, and most importantly, the Zoom link of the day. That way you can just lunch and learn and join what we're doing every day. So Career USA, the plus sign subscribe at groups.io. I'm the only person who can send an email out, so you will not be spammed. Uh, please know, Career DFW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. As I mentioned before, we have no full or part-time employees. I'm a volunteer. All of our speakers are volunteer. We're just here to help you. Please consider making a donation when you get your next job. So thank you for joining us today. Let me get that uh, handout here. I will put it in the chat window right now. This is 185 powerful verbs that you can use in your LinkedIn profile. And I think I have a second document. Uh, yeah, here's another one of action words. So both of those are there. They're both going out. So hopefully you can sit and download them. If you cannot download them, just send me an email. Uh, just look me up on LinkedIn. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Let's see, network the file name. So the PDF may or may not have gone through, but I'm not sure. But yeah, you can go through and check. If you have any questions, you're welcome just to email me at careerdfw at uh, txjmorr at yahoo.com. My personal email address, you'll see it on my LinkedIn profile. And uh, let me know what documents you'd like to have. So thank you very much for joining us today, everybody. And uh, we will see you hopefully later in the week or tomorrow.